Hey ladies and gents, Kirsten Sales here, uh, the naturopath that specializes in digestive health. And today is one of my favorite topics. I get a little bit weirdly excited about it. I'm coming to you live from Bali and we're just about to get a big thunderstorm, I think, so I can hear some thunder rumbling already. And I get supercharged by thunderstorms. I get lots of energy and I'm just like, ding, 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 ding. I really enjoy them. I don't know if it's because I grew up on the east coast of South Africa, which is considered the tropics as well. So we used to get some pretty amazing thunderstorms there too. I love them. And because I get nice and energized by these thunderstorms, that reminded me of another instance where people get really energized, which isn't as amazing. So today's topic is about parasites. And when I talk about parasites, I'm talking about the intestinal parasites, the little parasites that are hanging out in your guts. Commonly worms. Um, yeah, they're a bit gross. Probably most people with digestive issues might have them. So I live in Bali, and apparently in Indonesia, 90% of people living here have parasites. I've had them myself. I believe that I'm free of parasites lately. But because I live here, I'm going to do like a parasite cleanse every nine months, whether I feel any symptoms or not. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through the signs and symptoms of parasites, what the most common ones are, how to figure out if you do have them, like which testing to use, and then I'll also give you some treatment options that you can follow through with. Totally worth doing, even if there's a hint of a chance that you've got them. Because if you just leave them in there, they grow and they grow and they grow. And if you really want to freak yourself out, hop on YouTube <laughs> and Google intestinal parasites. It's gross. It's like little strands of spaghetti coming out of the guts. Kind of like a car crash that you can't look away from. So I think it takes a special kind of person to get excited about this sort of stuff. So maybe I'm just a special kind of naturopath. <laughs> okay, let's jump into the signs and symptoms. Well, first of all, let's even start with what are the parasites. So a parasite, if you think of outside of your body, imagine like a tree, a nice big tall tree and you get like some fungus growing on it. So you can get like mushrooms growing on trees, the things that kind of pull out. That parasite, so even though you can get beneficial parasites like symbiotic, generally they tend to be living off the host and they often hurt the host. So the ones that we get in our gut, they'll be living off us. So living off our food, clinging onto our intestinal walls and they don't really do nice things for us. The reason why I got, I remembered about this video that I wanted to make with the thunderstorm is because if you're a person that tends to get really energized around the full moon and maybe a little bit cray cray, it's a pretty good chance that you might have parasites in there. There's, um, I don't know if you heard the sayings like around full moon, the crazies are out and the prisons tend to be really full the hospitals, the emergency department is always overflowing on full moon. It's a real thing. Uh, the moon is often called Luna. Where does the word lunatic come from? From the Luna. And what happens here, so why this, is, why this could be a thing related to parasites, is because on the full moon, the parasites detach from the membrane walls, from your intestinal walls, and they lay their eggs. And while they're doing this, they release endotoxins, which are toxins on the inside. And these endotoxins can travel up, cross the blood-brain barrier, get into your brain, and make you go a little bit crazy. So that's the biggest sort of thing. I know a lot of people that comment, oh, I get really funny around the full moon. Secretly on the inside, it's like, ooh, I want to treat you for parasites. <laughs> also, if you think about little, little toddlers, Often, they'll be really energetic around full moon. Toddlers are always putting things in their mouth that might be from parasites. If you live in Indonesia like myself, or if you've traveled through Southeast Asia, the most common parasite that we have here is roundworm. I can't remember the Latin name. It looks like Ascites something, which is kind of appropriate because Ascites is one of the causes of bloating around the abdomen. It's when they get this fluid buildup around the abdomen pretty gross thing. So sign number one that you might have intestinal parasites. This um, sign is that you might just get unexplained diarrhea or constipation or gas or any type of IBS type symptoms. So IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. They don't really have, that you can't pinpoint it on anything else. Could be parasites. And sign number two that you might have intestinal parasites. 
you might have traveled abroad and you can remember having a bout of food poisoning so it can either come out the bottom end or the top end or both at the same time so it'd be like Travis diarrhea Travis sickness that could spark off a little infestation of parasites sign number three for intestinal parasites doesn't even have to be traveling abroad you've had one bout of food poisoning and you haven't been the same since I remember when the first time I had food poisoning it was when I was living in England I still remember it I still remember the exact street I remember that it was cold I remember I was wearing a scarf and my lovely black jacket and I had had a chicken burger from Burger King and as I was eating it the mayonnaise tasted a bit funny or the chicken tasted a bit funny and I ate it anyway because I was really hungry and oh, I swear I turned green within half an hour and then it was just all over for the next 24 hours <laughs> food poisoning usually lasts around 24 hours so that can kind of give you an idea if it's more of a virus or a bacteria or what's going on in your digestive system gross sign number four you have trouble falling asleep at night and you wake multiple times during the night so the parasites and the bugs and worms are more active at night time and especially at night time, if you notice that you have an itchy anus, that can be the worms coming out. They want to kind of see things. I've never seen it, but I've heard of parents even seeing the worms in their little kids at night time, poking out their little bum hole. <laughs> I don't know why I get so excited about parasites. It's, it's really cool. So I um, had parasites myself, unknowingly. It was also around the same sort of time that I had SIBO, which was now beginning of 2016 so that's almost two years ago quite a journey and so when I was healing up my SIBO I'd done lots and lots of research and there's all the different diets that you can follow and I was taking herbs and then at the time I was still gathering all this information so now I know a lot more but there's so much conflicting information about what diet to follow when you're doing SIBO diets so I was like you know what I'm just not going to eat anything because I, I really believe in the power of fasting but should be supervised if you don't, haven't done it before. But I had plenty of experience with fasting, so I didn't water fast, juice fast, shorter, shorter, extending them out longer and longer. And so I figured I'm just gonna do a water fast. So I took the two weeks off work, and the first couple of days I was just lying in my bed in the aircon watching Netflix. That's all I did. I swear the first couple of days I spent, slept like 16 hours in a day. And then, because I'd been doing all this cleaning out, I wanted to flush out anything that had kind of been in there. So I went for a colonic, which is like colon hydrotherapy, where if you don't know, it's they, I like the closed system, and they put the tube up your bum, and it's very controlled, at the right temperature, there's oxygen in the water as well, and the valve gets released, the water comes up all the way into your colon and your large intestine, and then release the valve, the pressure helps to draw everything out. And so when I did this, I think that might have been my second time doing them. So I'd also done them when I lived in Perth, but I, that was a few years before. And then there's a little tube that you can see everything that comes out. Again, I don't know who else would get excited about this apart from a gut naturopath. And then I got parasites out. And the lovely lady who does the colonic, I love her, her name is Betty. And she's like, look, there it is. And I could see this horrible little parasite going through the tube. Like, oh, that's so gross. How long was it in me? But the next day, my eyes were so vibrant and I had so much energy and I felt so much better. Because leading up to me figuring out I had SIBO and parasites, I was always tired and all my, my whole body hurt and I had all these cravings. I put on like 10 kilos within a month. I just wanted to eat everything. And so the day after having this colonic was the first time in a, in months that I could see when I look in the mirror I could see me so I don't know if any of you have ever been sick and been well been sick been well and noticed the difference in that sort of thing you look at yourself in the mirror but you don't really see yourself that's how I was feeling but get those little asshole parasites out and I felt much better instantly sign number five I had this one as well itchy skin it kind of felt like my whole skin was like tingling and prickling and Oh, that's a bit gross. You can also get, so the, the skin is very much related to the digestive system. So you can also get things like eczema, uh, excuse me, eczema. You can get hives, maybe dermatitis. You can get weird little red rashes. That's often coming from the inside. 
not always. Sometimes it can be contact dermatitis where something you've put on has caused it, but very often it's coming from your digestive system. Number six, grinding your teeth at night. So if you wake up in the morning and you're all clenched up, or maybe you've got someone sleeping next to you and they comment that you tend to grind your teeth at night, or maybe the dentist tells you, grinding your teeth, that could be parasites too. There is another cause, sometimes it can be deficiency of magnesium. So magnesium helps to relax the muscles and then calcium contracts it. So if you don't have the right balance between the calcium and the magnesium, you can end up with a sort of muscle spasm. And if you don't have enough magnesium to relax, this is a very strong muscle here, it's a TMJ, temporal mandibular joint. And so if you don't have enough magnesium in your body, you just wake up with a really clenched jaw. But otherwise parasites. Number seven. So if you have unexplained muscle pain and joint pain, can you hear the thunder? Oh, love it. <laughs> so unexplained muscle or joint pain, I had this one too. Uh, at the time I was teaching yoga most days and practicing my own yoga and surfing, so I was very active, I was really fit. But I'd wake up in the morning so sore and it would take me probably like half an hour to kind of get my body sort of moving and release that morning stiffness. And I couldn't even touch my toes at the time. And that was really humbling because it was, it was my lifestyle. And I meant to be this like health figure and um, advocate, a health advocate and yoga instructor. And then I'm usually very bendy. I can get myself in all sorts of pretzel positions. But again, when I had parasites, I could hardly even touch my toes. So that flexibility and the soreness and the stiffness. Especially if it's all over your body. Sometimes like with osteoarthritis, the osteo is like with the bone arthritis with the joints, then that would kind of be different on different sides of the body. So you might have it in your one hand but not the other. So then I wouldn't so much think parasites, then I think more wear and tear osteoarthritis. But if it's all over and everything just hurts, it could be parasites. Number eight. You're just tired. You're tired all the time. You've got brain fog, you might be feeling feelings of apathy where you just can't be bothered with anything, you don't want to get out of bed. Kind of like you're walking through mud. That can be the parasites too. Because they do, they aren't very nice. Like they, they take our nutrients and they take our food and they get first dibs. And then they also release toxins in our digestive system. And these toxins, as I said in the beginning, can cross the blood-brain barrier, which can mess around with our mental function. So it's like you're trying to think of the words or you're sitting in a meeting and you can't quite you can't quite get it parasites and number nine so this is probably one of the reasons why I put on so much weight so quickly you never feel satisfied after meals and why would you because the parasites are getting all your nutrients so your body goes into like starvation mode because your cells aren't getting the nutrition that it needs so parasites are getting them and number ten you might have iron deficiency anemia. This can also be true for SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I see the two very often because it's one of their favorite nutrients. So they love iron, they feed on iron. So if you've got iron deficiency anemia, which can also be another reason why you're tired all the time, but then you're taking supplemental iron, you're just feeding them and they're gonna get it first. So you could be dosing up with iron, but still ending up anemic. One little home check that you can do, if you've pulled down the bottom eyelid and the amount of pinkness in your eye can indicate how much iron you might have floating around your bloodstream. Obviously it's not a full-on diagnostic tool, but it can be a little bit of an indicator. And the reason that you get so tired is because we need the iron to transport the oxygen to the cells. It's the hemoglobin. And that little hemoglobin is red. So if you've got really, really, really pale eyes, you might not have enough hemoglobin to transfer that oxygen. So now that you know the top 10 signs and symptoms of intestinal parasites, if you connect with any of those, it might be time to move to the next little bit, which is testing. So how do you test for intestinal parasites? My favorite way is to do a stool analysis. And you can do this whatever country that you're living in. And then the main labs for the different countries, so in Australia, I use Nutribath, do everything through them. And then in the UK, there's a lovely company called Genova, G-E-N-O-V-A. And then in the States, I quite like Great Plains Laboratory. But wherever you are, you can order a test kit from wherever else you want to order it from, and then send it back to one of those countries. 
and then often the country that you're living in will often have a local distributor for one of the other ones. So even in Indonesia where I live, in Jakarta, there's ABC Laboratorium who is a local distributor for Genova in the UK. That's often how it works. Okay. So then the test that you want to look for is a CDSA, which is a complete digestive stool analysis. And then you often see times three, which means that it's done over three days. And then you also want to add on with PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction. And that's like the, how to find the DNA of the parasites that are in there. And I recommend the three days because you don't always catch them every day because they do different things and go off and have a party and come back. So highly recommend doing it over three days to pick up any parasites that are in there. Cool. And you'll also learn things about um, what good bacteria you have in there. Do you have any other bad bacteria? Do you have any fungus? Do you have any yeast? Do you have any worms? You'll learn, depending on the test that you choose, but you can also learn things about inflammation in the digestive system, the state of your immune in your digestive system, so like your secretory IgA, which is like a defense mechanism, keeping the good guys in and keeping the bad guys out. It's really, really important if you want to kind of nourish your ecosystem of microflora in there. Yeah, and the plain PCR, I know in Australia, most GPs will do that on Medicare as well anyway. So how do you get parasites? Well, they are super, super easy to pick up. So the most common way is through contaminated food or water or undercooked food. But all the vegans out there, it's not just in animal products. Definitely for sure, it's um, more common from eating undercooked animal products, but you can get them from anywhere. So if you haven't washed your fruit and vegetables properly, or if you're out in a restaurant and they haven't washed the fruit and vegetable properly, or you've ordered a, something with ice and the ice isn't filtered water, or if you brush your teeth with the water from a dirty, dirty tap, you can get it from there. You can even get it from walking barefoot one time. That's just enough to kind of pick up a parasite as well. And then once you've got them in your system, it's really easy to pass on to others. So if you've been to the bathroom, you haven't washed your hands properly, touch up door handle, the next person touch the door handle can pick it up as well. Could be on the salt shaker, could be in those nuts that you eat off the bar. Very easy to pick up parasites. So then, <laughs> what happens if you've got them? So there's different ways to treat for parasites. And I love using, as a, of course I'm gonna say this because I'm a naturopath, but herbs are fantastic. So I've just been treating a client with um, SIBO. Her numbers came off really, really high off the charts. And so we're doing some different protocols with antimicrobials, antibacterials, but a lot of these herbs are also anti-parasite. So we're about three weeks in through the herbal protocol started feeling a little bit tired, started feeling like a little bit of a blockage and wasn't feeling so good. So I recommended to go for a colonic and lots of stuff came out. So it did two colonics and there's lots of parasites and I got really excited and I, lo I love hearing about this. And then the next day I feel so much better. Isn't that awesome? So the, the life cycle of parasites tends to be about three weeks. So if you suspect that you have parasites, I would do some sort of anti-parasite protocol for three weeks, give it a three week break and then repeat it again for three weeks so that you catch any of the eggs that kind of hatched in the meantime. Always before I recommend any herbs or supplements, just disclaiming that I don't know your case history, so please check in with your healthcare practitioner or give me a shout and we can organize a consult. So, my favorite herbs for parasites are wormwood, garlic, cloves, oregano. Oregano, be careful with this one because it's not, it's not specifically non-specific so it can kill a few good bacteria too so there's some people that stay on oregano for years and years because it helps them decrease their bloating but they're also ruining the rest of their good microbiome same thing with citrus seed extract which is also sometimes called grape seed extract it's non-specific so yes it does kill off the bad stuff but it can also kill off the good stuff um, yeah I think those are the main herbs pomegranate husk it's quite nice yeah and then yeah so do that for three weeks three week break and then three weeks again and then if you are going to do that i recommend if, if possible doing like a colonic at the end of the three weeks because they are like bloody cockroaches you can kill them and they can kind of go into hiding but then as soon as the conditions become favorable again they can just come back to life 
So if you're doing all this work with cutting them through the, the herbs, and you also want to kind of change your diet a little bit to reduce the sugars in your diet, because they, they just feed off sugar, it's their ultimate thing. So if you're kind of doing the work with the herbs, but still having a really high sugar diet, it's kind of like you're just treading water. You're not really going to get too much benefit. So at the end of the three weeks of killing off these little parasites, if you do a colonic, flush them out while they're dead so that they don't come back to life. That will be the best way to do it. And I do recommend colonic, uh, colon hydrotherapy over an enema because an enema doesn't really get all the way up. It can definitely help, but I highly recommend doing a full colonic at the end of it if you can. Parasites. If you're nice and healthy and your vitality is really, really high, this parasite's probably not going to be able to take hold. If you think of like a bicycle wheel, if you've got a bit of a flat tire and it's like clunk, 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 it's going to be very easy for to pick up a thorn, pick up something else, grab hold. But if you're going really, really fast and your wheels are spinning, 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 pew, 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 all the little stones are going to ping off and not really get a chance to kind of stick themselves in there. So if you have got parasites, like I know when I got parasites, I was really run down. I was working so much. I was playing a lot, I was surfing a lot. So fun stuff too, but I was definitely run down. Maybe that's when I first got them, I'm, I can't be sure. But for sure it was a run down period of my life. So that's often, that's often the case. So if you have got parasites, maybe think about ways that you can support your body, get your vitality raised, and then you'll probably need to do some sort of treatment protocol to get rid of them, but then you wanna make sure that you don't, they don't come back. Because if you always run down, it's like a perfect little playground for little guys to have a party. Like unruly teenagers, if they see an opportunity to have a party, of course they're going to take it. Parasites. Totally better out than in. So I hope you're not too freaked out. And I hope this provided some enjoyment, as much as it did for me. <laughs> if you need any help, if you think you've got any parasites, or maybe someone that you know might benefit from the video, share away. And if you'd like any help with them, just give me a shout. We can sort something out there too. And see how you go next full moon. Are you nice and energized or a little bit crazy? <laughs> see you.